Yeah, welcome everyone for High Performance Computing, Advanced Scientific Computing, and congratulations, you have reached the end of the course. Um, we just with the epilogue will basically go through a couple of elements of the course and of the area of HPC. Of course, we will quickly reflect what we had the last time for our YouTube watchers. We looked a little bit into terrestrial systems as another application field of HPC, um, where lots of different physical processes are actually there. And um, we can imagine the complexity of all of this. So that with real physical equations, we have no chance at all to do this directly. So we have to simplify the reality much more with mathematical models. And even then we don't find closed form solution. We cannot simulate everything. We still have to simplify the mathematical model coming to numerical methods, numerical approximation of the reality. And we have seen that this, uh, PDEs play an important role of all of these different physics. PDEs in terms of partial differential equations are important for change over times of multiple variables that we found in all of the equations, which is one of the difference to ordinary uh, differential equations you probably already know. By doing so, we have to couple those codes. We saw that basically in order to have a realistic regional climate model here, we have the groundwater model, we have a subsurface, and then basically collaborating or we yeah, would say exchanging variables really significantly with the CLM model here, which is then the land surface model, and then another one which is in the atmosphere, the COSMO. And by coupling all of these, you have lots of different physical variables to exchange the status over time. Still, you would do an iterative approach that we already had in our assignment, for instance, with the water the same way here. But you have another, let's say, application that we call the coupler, which is here in Oasis recoupler, that is responsible for exchanging then the variables with MPI to all of these different applications. Of course, they also have to be instrumented for this because they can run standalone. But if you want to do it realistic with interactions with each other, you can add more and more of those, of course, over time. Hence, there goes the requirement for computation. Then at the end, we looked a little bit in our weather prediction that we have daily in our apps and see that all of that is based on MPI and OpenMP. For instance, lots of those are fueled by the VARF code. There are newer codes also around these days um, with ICON and so on that don't do a let's say, um, a Cartesian grid over the atmosphere. They rather do a hexagon or hexagonal and different ways how you do basically a grid here. But in the end, the key message remains that all the elements you learned in the first part of the course, really, like domain decomposition, MPI, Harlow regions, OpenMP, uh, all of this is basically reused um, in these different codes. Interesting enough, the NWP community is really based on Fortran, so still an interesting uh, programming language. But let us close the course um, now with the epilogue. Um, this is really just an informal lecture. Um, I think the, the idea is really think about the mindset now of all of you as participants and maybe also the YouTube community. Um, there are lots of job offers on the market. We will review this in LinkedIn very briefly. Um, really how you can turn now all what you learned also into action and getting a job very easily. I think HPC experts are always wanted. They're, they're rare because it's quite complex material and complex technology. And hence, there's lots of uh, jobs usually around. Then the skill set, of course, thinking about what you learned can be applied also maybe to PhD positions or master's thesis topics that we have in HPC, also combined, of course, with different areas of physics or even machine and deep learning like you have seen Rocco, for instance, in his PhD studies, or Shadi, maybe in the health domain, or Razor in CFD. You can go on and go on. These are all opportunities here. Then from the tool set, really, this power programming tools, you can always go to the next level. We are already doing lots of quantum computing in our research group. We have lots of publications around this. Two PhDs that are working just on quantum annealing. So this is the next iteration of power computing of another area. So you see there also the tools that you basically acquired now, you can also transform partly to different areas um, and actually no new future areas to study. So I want to just close a little bit of high performance computing on another perspective, not on the lecture to lecture base, give you some further readings. Of course, here the call for bachelor master thesis and PhD thesis, let me know. A small advertise for the cloud computing course in, in the fall 2022, where many of you have already let's say the basic knowledge, which helps really going quicker in this cloud computing course, things like parallelization and so on. The understanding the difference between CPU and GPU is also there. 
So HPC from another perspective, um, you would see these, what you could crunch the material in is theory, techniques, and paradigms. So theory, what you learned were parallel algorithm, really breaking a big problem into smaller pieces in order to do a speed up, right? We have seen some formulas around this. Adding course means we want to form some speed up and I have to always be aware that I have this weak and strong scaling, right? If you remember, these were driven by different laws, Amdahl's laws and Gustafsson's law, right? Because if you don't have a good scaling, you don't want to have a speed up. Right. So and you don't want to paralyze them. So it's all in a way connected in the theoretical elements. And uh, some forms of theory were also now basically just in the last lecture, for example, again, this numerical approximation, uh, PDE solvers. Uh, these are based on known physical laws, um, you know, numerical methods that also Razor was presenting already in CFD. And I just added here a little bit terrestrial systems. These are theories which are not really going very quickly. So they are there to stay no matter where you go. In different application fields, you will face these theories. Then techniques also remain. So you have something like message passing interfaces, the de facto standard in parallel computing. Of course, augmented with OpenMP and hybrid programming, as you know, for shared memory. Although this has, of course, massive limits. But combining it then with MPI to go distributed memory is, of course, then scalable. In order to achieve, however, the perfect scaling, you have noticed the network communication and I.O. also plays into the game with, you know, concurrency uh, and concurrent access to files. And when you do these techniques, you have seen that depending on how you do your meshes, how you do your discretizations, you have seen it mattered actually how we do the blocky or the kind of uh, column wise parallelization. There was more communication, right? Or mesh refinements when I have smoke in a tube. Uh, basically, the smoke will go forward time step by time step. So here and there, I can refine my mesh and not waste computing on areas where there's no smoke anymore. So lots of these techniques, of course, play a role in many different physics and many different areas. And of course, to the higher scale with cloud and grid infrastructures, the same techniques apply. You just have some middleware where you essentially get the access and going on this grid and cloud infrastructures. And then the key discipline and techniques is really the coupling of all of this that we've seen, um, the CFD simulations that maybe wants to bridge, you know, the, the measurements that we have really um, on the different, let's say, laboratories that we have, let's say water. And then you compute this in the computer and want to have the real, let's say, water flow approximate as best as possible. And for this, also the feed elemental method that we have seen in the car crashes and so on, and also by Razor, are also significant techniques for lots of ways of physics, for instance, understanding glacier carving and so on. So paradigms is also a part which hugely remains. There will be always a distinction between high throughput computing, very nicely independent computing, we said in the in the past, embarrassingly parallel computing, where just the throughput matters of data. Um, by high performance computing, you learned we talk a little bit different in the terms of network interactions, right? So InfiniBand, the high interconnectivity, of course, is a play a key central role here. You cannot run numerical weather prediction in a high throughput computing manner. You have seen the lots of interactions of all these variables, also in this terrestrial system with some groundwater modeling requires these interconnections between cores to enable a good smooth exchange of halos, right? And from this, this modeling of the reality, this computational modeling that you learned in this course in different facets from molecular systems up to materials, but also then again, the terrestrial systems or the fluid flow from razor and so on. This is all something which is a paradigm which we will continue in the future. Definitively machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence at large is a paradigm. Learning from data instead of using physics for computational modeling is another paradigm which is not there to change. So the models change here, the deep learning models getting better, but the key idea of learning from data will remain as well as a paradigm. And then of course the approximations where I said the reality is too tough to really um, you know, compute this iterative numerical simulations over time, or as I said, this kind of repeated random sampling methods with Monte Carlo methods, ensembles, doing it not once, doing it a thousand times. This is also, of course, something which remains as paradigms here in this course. So this was another perspective, um, basically orthogonal to this. 
um, from all the different lectures what you should learn and hopefully also will remain in your head a little bit when you face real problems in industry. Just some further pointers, there's a praise training portal where not only my different courses are there for basically parallel and scalable machine learning, you find here lots of MPI courses of MMP colleagues from my colleagues worldwide, especially from Europe. So that is a pointer for you if you want to know much more about MPI, I could even possibly give you in one lecture, please go there. There's one book which might be also interesting to look at, although in the light of today, I would say, Use YouTube, use different books available, use different sources really to understand problems. And that is much better than reading a book from beginning to end these days. Um, also a short offer, they are of course master thesis topics um, in the way of data scientists, but you have also seen computational scientists in different physics. We have still ma many master thesis topics, PhD positions also available right now in different countries. Uh, let us know if you're interested. This could be in combination with Jülich, with the German center. So that means you would probably um, go to Germany or you basically go vice versa. Um, like, you know, basically Shadi and Rocco and so they are basically on both sides in Iceland and Germany, which could be quite interesting for you as well, but doesn't have to be that way. And finally, just here, think about the cloud computing course. I think many of you are uh, it's a little bit self-marketing, but I think many of you have now know the difference between GPUs and CPUs. Parallelization as a huge, um, let's say, winner of all of this. And the cloud computing course is very similar in this regard. We go a little bit to more machine learning and a little bit more high level. So we don't compute C anymore. We will be using Python scripts here and there in cloud systems and using Apache and basically different big data stacks for analytics and so on. And we'll basically leave a little bit the lower level that we had here in the HPC course. Some of you know that already. They have already taken the class last year. Um, and basically the modus operandi, how we do the course, this is walkthroughs and so on, is actually very similar like this course. Finally, I would say um, I have a big team behind me, not only my PhD students, which support me strongly every single day. Um, of course, with the management and how E, Matthias Bog, Helmut Neukirchen, Christian, um, Oliver Peter Pals, all of those are really good professors I work with, also in AI, uh, with Thomas Philipp Bruner, Son Stein. Uh, now I also should mention Hafstein, we are also good colleagues. Uh, he is a new assistant professor, but very nice. And of course, we should not forget there are several people doing also the U-Tune cluster here that you see, um, basically that you are working with. Unfortunately, these both have already left, so they're not anymore there. They're just one started at, at North um, now, nowadays, so basically they're not anymore there, but we have others that also, of course, support us on the systems. While you did your quiz, some have noticed um, I put in this video that's quite nice. Unfortunately, it ends at 2013 because there was a supercomputing conference where we had essentially this video created for, and it would be nice to have a new video from this, so I would also stimulate the community to really do this. Oh, that's all what I wanted to leave here for this recording. Thank you very much for being part of this course. And this course will be repeated, of course, next year with some changes here and there in the slides, of course. See you then.